We're trying to be real professional, right? All right, so we're going to get into the Word and what the Lord has for us to do. And today my message is called Dirty Feet. Dirty Feet. I'm going to be reading from John, the 13th chapter, the 3rd through the 10th verse in the New Living Translation. But before I do, I'm going to have a word of prayer. And then we're going to jump right in. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you would open up our ears that we can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Father, we ask that you would um, not only let us hear, but that you would bring demonstration afterwards. That, that what we are preaching about, that you would show us. And so, Father, we give you honor. We give you praise. We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Starting with verse 3. It says, Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you would never, ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. And, and, and the uh, Amplified says, so we can have nothing to do with each other. So Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well. Lord, not just my feet. But Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for his feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. Amen. Amen. So my title is Dirty Feet. Dirty Feet. Dirty Feet. So, I, you know, I, God asks me questions oftentimes about different things. And so my, my response when, when, I, when God even brought me this about the dirty feet, I'm like, well, Lord, what is it that you're trying to tell me? And so the question is, well, why did Jesus do this? What was the significance? What was the point? What was the method that God, uh, that Jesus was trying to do? Well, I have four points, and the, 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 the last one I'm going to spend more time in. But the first thing he was trying to do is he wanted to show his, his, his love for his disciples. We see that, and I didn't give it to you, but John 13 and 1 says, Now before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that his hour had come, and it was time for him to leave this world and return to the Father. Having greatly loved his own who were in the world, he loved them and continually loved them with his perfect love to the end eternally. See, Jesus loved his disciples. We talked about that today, about this whole love walk when we went well, in ministry school. But when we really looked at what love really requires, it's a lot. It's not just a warm and fuzzy. It's not just some sentiment that they put on a Valentine's Day card that I can love you on, on February 14th, but then I jack you up the rest of the year. No, it's not that kind of love. This is the kind of love that says, I love you consistently, always. And it's not based on how good you are for me to love you. Because see, what we know is Jesus loved his disciples through betrayal. How do I know that? Because Peter denied him. But guess what he did? Peter denied him, but he restored him. Love will restore you. Love will put you back in a place, even though you might not deserve it. But, but love will say, I love you enough to put you back in the right place. He, he loved them through doubt. Thomas doubted who, who Jesus was. But Jesus did what? He gave with proof. He said, here, put your hand in the hole and, and, and your finger in the hole in my hand. You know, God loves us enough. Jesus loves us enough. Then guess what? Even sometimes when we doubt, I don't know, maybe y'all super sanctified and y'all don't never doubt, but every now and then, I be like, well, Lord, you said you were going to do this. You said I was going to have all of these stacks of money I was counting. I ain't got five cent in my pocket. So when is these stacks coming? So doubt sometimes will come in, but guess what? Jesus loves you through your doubt, and he'll give you proof. What's the proof you're getting? And now and then he'll give you something to just show you that I'm still God. Let me tell you what happened on yesterday. I was looking for my daughter's social security card because it was something I needed to do and I only had a short period of time to do it. And I'm like, Lord, where is this social security card? Now you might not know, but in my, in my, my, um, 
utility room because my girls that moved in and all this stuff is in the basement. It is like a minefield down there. You can't walk nowhere. I stood in the door and said, Jesus, I don't know where to look. I don't know where to go. I ain't going to be able to find a social security card. So I said, Lord, right now with the spirit of recall, with the spirit of, of the revealing, reveal to me, where do I even look? I instantly heard, look in the yellow basket. So there's this one yellow basket sticking out of all of this garbage that needs to be cleaned up. I went and picked up the yellow basket. And it had bills in it. But I'm like, Lord, it wouldn't be in here because... This is all bills. So he said, start looking. So I started raffling through the paper. Some of these bills had dates from 2016. I'm thinking, Lord, we just used this social security card not that long ago. It can't be. I heard, get to the end. Get to the bottom. I just said, all right. I took all the stuff out. Guess what was the bottom? It was the envelope with all of her stuff in the bottom. My family heard me. I just shouted, thank you, Jesus. I was like, Lord, thank you. See, sometimes even in your doubt, even when you're going through, God will just sprinkle a little something here, a sprinkle a little something there. He'll give you a little something to just remind you, oh, I am with you. You definitely heard from me. It wasn't your thoughts. It wasn't your Because I didn't have enough sense to even think to look in that basket. Because I tell you the truth, I wouldn't have looked in that basket. That would have been the last place I looked, but it was the first place God sent me to. And then you know what? How do I know Jesus loved his disciples? Because he loved them through their power struggles. Remember when the brothers was like, well, we want to sit on your left and we want to, hey, put us in the right place. But Jesus told them, uh-uh, I'm going to need you to humble yourself. See, he loves us enough to make sure that we humble ourselves so we don't get ourselves out of pocket, out of socket, out of sorts. Because we are in the right place doing the right thing. That's how much his love for you is he will correct you when you get a little too puffed up, a little too high about yourself, a little back in there because I'm the high and anointed one. You done gave yourself an all your own title. I'm the exalted apostle of one. No, whatever the Lord say, he will just say, I love you enough, but I need you to calm it down. Because guess what? You couldn't even handle that even if you thought you could. I love you enough to correct you. Thank you, Jesus. And then he loves us through wrong choices. You know, Peter in his in his in his zeal, he chopped off the ear of the soldier. And then the other disciples, remember what they wanted to do? They got mad because the people they received, and they told Jesus, well, just call down fire and just whoo, take them all out. Jesus said, no, 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 that's not how we're going to do this. Jesus, in fact, what did he do? He put the man's ear back on, and he told the other disciples, that's not how we're going to do this. So Jesus loved the disciples enough that he made sure that we are aligning ourselves with what he wants us to be. Yes, and then he loved them through their misfit condition. Thank you, Lord. They all came from varied backgrounds. Yes, God. Nobody wanted them. But guess what? Because what you don't understand is the fact that they were fishermen and other jobs was because they, they weren't good enough to be in the elite club of those that would be the a men or to, to be the a priest. So that was the second job. They couldn't be in the priesthood. They couldn't be a holy man. So what did they do? They had to find a job. And so they were misfits. They were outcasts. They couldn't even be nobody's second servant. You know, they couldn't be nobody armor bearer. So they had to go find some kind of other job. And they were misfit and outcasts. And guess what Jesus went and did? He didn't go to the, he didn't go to make his disciples. He didn't go to the temple and say, okay, I want the 12 top uh, uh, priest in this place. That's going to be my disciples. Come on, let's roll, bros. No, that's not what he did. That's not what he did. He went and found those that didn't never think they could be nothing, get nothing, do nothing. Those man in their business just trying to make a living. Uh, out of 15 cents. He said, I'm going to get them. And guess what? I'm getting ready to tell them that I'm going to take you from mis misfit to kingdom fit. And from and from uh from from um kingdom fit to world changers. I'm getting ready to do something different in you so that you can be more than what you thought. And so those that was at the top, they ain't the ones that I'm coming from. I'm coming for those that have come lowly, those that are down here, those that are outcasts, those that don't nobody want. He said, those that are what I'm coming from. Thank you, Jesus. Why did he do what he did? He wanted to show his humility. See, he it, 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 he stooped. You can't wash nobody's feet up here. He stooped Amen. down. He humbled himself to wash their feet. Thank you, Lord God. John 13, 4 says this in the New Living, New Living Translation. So he got up from the table, took off his robe and wrapped, and, and in the Amplifax it says, a servant's towel around his waist. Jesus was doing something. He was showing his disciples, I don't, how do you, how 
are you going to be great in this kingdom? It's not going to be because you got a lot of money. That's fine, because I want a lot of money. But that's not what's going to make you great in kingdom. It's not because you got a lot of followers. That's all good, but you can have a lot of followers and you can be all taking them all to hell. So that ain't even it either. He says, so what is it? It's when you're able, when you're willing to take and wrap yourself up like a servant. Thank you, Jesus. Wrap yourself in the garment of a servant. Are you willing to wrap the towel around your waist? Wrap the garment around your waist that says, I'm going to be a servant. Are you willing to be a servant that will humbly submit and bow down and stoop down and help somebody in me? He said, that's the people that I'm trying to promote. I'm going to be your promoter. You self-promoter? You got your own head shot on everything you do? He said, no, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those wrapped in servanthood. Amen. Yes, Lord God. Amen. Wrapped in servanthood. The Samaritan, what, what do we know about the Samaritan? He was an outcast, didn't nobody like him. He wasn't nobody. But what he do? He stooped down and helped the man that nobody else would help. He was willing to say, okay, I'll give my all and my own to do for you. And God has said, I'm looking for some folks that's going to do their all and give from their own, own pocket to help somebody else. Yes, Lord. Hosea 11, 4 says, I led Israel along with my ropes of kindness and love. I lifted the yoke from his neck and I myself stooped to feed him. He said, I myself stooped to feed him. Jesus was trying to show his disciples what is going to make a difference in the kingdom if you are willing to stoop to feed somebody. Are well, you willing to stoop to do some things for somebody else? Today's um, Evangelist Tiffany was moved by somebody she saw on the street. She came and got Pastor James and said, okay, I don't know if he's homeless or not, but let's go over there and pray for them. They was willing to stoop down and pray for somebody. They were willing to get out of their comfort zone. See, the Samaritan was on his way, minding his business, but he was willing to stop and stoop. Sometimes we got to be willing to stop and stoop. Stop and go help somebody. Stop and be able to be somebody's um, uh, help that they need this work. That's what Jesus was doing. What did he say? He wrapped himself with a servant's towel. It's time for us to start wrapping ourselves like servants so we can do what God has called us to do. Thank you, Jesus. And then he did it to give them an example. And we see that in John 13, verses 15 through 16. It says, for I gave you this as an example so that you should do in turn as I did to you. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, a slave is no greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. Jesus, everything he did, he didn't do nothing by happenstance. He didn't do anything by coinkydink. Everything that he did was intentional. We serve an intentional God. We serve an intentional Savior. He doesn't just do stuff for the sake of just saying, I need to put some page, some words on this book so y'all have something to read. No, he did it to give us an example of what it looks like. He was taking the time, because what did he say? He said he knew that he was going. He, he said Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. He knew that his season was coming to an end on this earth. And he said, I got some things I got to put in order. I got to put some things in order. I got to get my disciples ready because they weren't always ready. They was jacked up like we be jacked up. They done followed him, walked with him for three years, and they still was jacked up. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you be like, Lord, it's been three years, and these people are going to stop being jacked up. I ain't talking about nobody. But Lord Jesus, if we're going to stop being jacked up, jacked up, jacked up, can they get it right? But Jesus was long-suffering. He was patient with these rockhead people he had. He, he was patient with them. But he called them out. Because when Peter told him, no, no, you ain't going to the cross, what he said, devil, get thee behind me. Sometimes you have to be willing to be called out. So when your, when your leader call you out, don't take it personal. It ain't that they don't like you. They just see the spirit trying to move in you. So Jesus was willing. He loved his disciples, but he was willing to call out the spirits that wasn't working right on the inside. Oh, I'm preaching good. I'm blessing myself. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. But he gave them an example because, see, he knew where he came from. He knew what his mission was, so he was intentional because he knew this little man of misfit, this little 12 minus one because I know this one is jacked up. He said, this, this band of misfits that I have, I know that I got to prepare them enough because they finna take this world yes. for yes. God. Yes. These misfits, yes. I'm going, I need to make them kingdom fit. And when I make them kingdom fit, they're going to be world changers. Yes. They're going to change this world. Turn it upside down. Folks that didn't know how to talk, folks that was doubtful, folks yes. that stumbled and, and they, well, I don't know what to say. He said, I'm getting ready to do a move on the inside of them when the Holy Ghost fall, that they are going to be so powerful, they ain't going to know what to do but open their mouth. They're going to open up their mouth, and when they speak, thousands will change. Yes. When they open their mouth and speak, yes. things will move. Amen. But he said, I got to give you an example. Because, see, I don't want you to think this is in your power. I don't want you to think this is because of who you are. I want you to know that you know that you know it's because you're a servant first. Yes. A servant first. A servant first. You're not serving you. Yes, Lord. And people didn't come to serve you. We can get in these places where you're like, oh, I'm the high and lifted up pastor, so I'm going to sit here. I just need y'all to bring me my juice and my, yeah, come, come wipe my brow real quick and, you know, come fan me. I ain't James, J uh, what is his name, James Brown? You ain't James Brown. This ain't no performing. So when you go down, they put the cape on you. No, that's not what this is. It's about bringing him and showing him the glory of God. It's about directing him to the king. It's not about directing him to me. to condemn you and remind you of what you didn't do right. But I come to tell you God does not condemn, but he will convict you. He will tell you you know what? You weren't supposed to be doing what you was doing. You know you wrong. There's two left shoes. Repent. Get it right. And then he, I love it because he tells us get up, take your bed and move. So the mess you made, take that with you. So deal with the mess you made because that's the consequence. So when you get up you got to deal with the consequence, but keep moving. He said you can't stay in the place where when you last was broke. You can't stay in the place where you last was bruised. You can't stay in the place where you've been hurt. You can't stay in the place of bitterness. I'm healing you now. Get up, pick up your bed, and get to moving. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Jesus. Get to moving. Thank you, Lord. Get to moving. Thank you, Jesus. And he did it because he wanted to show us how to humble ourselves. That ministry, Christian life, is about humility. It is not about who got the best this. I saw, and a friend of my pastor mine was quite upset. They had this, um, not a raffle, what do you call it? They had this um, survey on who the best preacher. And they was putting all these names on who the best preacher was. And she said, I don't see Jesus' name on there. Because if I'm going to vote for anybody, it's going to be Jesus. Because if we don't have Jesus, all of us are just doing this. My, 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 my. We, just, we just flapping our guns and ain't saying nothing. Because if there's no power behind it, it might be flowery words. It might sound wonderful. and It, it, it might sound very educated and up and poof, -y -poof -y. But it don't mean nothing if it ain't no power behind it. Yes. We need Jesus for the power. And so then the, the, the final point I want to bring is he did it, not only to give them example, but he wanted to show something to his disciple. He wanted to signify a spiritual washing. Christ washed his disciples' feet that, they, that he might signify to them this spiritual washing and the cleaning of your soul from the pollution of sin. Amen. Think about it like this for a minute. 
you know, we, we go outside and we got paved streets and, you know, so we, we, we had no clue about the kind of roads that they was on. They didn't have no paved roads. They was rocky and dusty. And they had on sandals. So think about it. You walk a little bit and you ain't got no rain. That dust, what the dust going to do? It's going to fly up. Amen. It's going to start getting on your feet. Now the rest of you clean because you didn't have a bath, but you're going to get to your destination and guess what? Your feet are dirty. But one of the things you have to understand is also the culture. They would generally wash the feet because when you came to eat, we, we used to the big tables and all that kind of stuff. When they came together to sit down, yep. they was eating on the floor. They was sitting yeah. down. There was not always a recline at the table the way we think. It's a sitting down so you can recline because you was kind of sitting like on the floor. So I don't want to be eating your dirty, dirty feet Amen. <laughs> it's on, at, at the table. Amen. I ain't trying to be looking at your dirty feet because I'm not trying to get gross, but it wasn't just dust out there. There were animals. Hello. Animals leave droppings. We don't know if they had droppings. We don't have dirt. You don't know if they pests they done stepped up. They feed the dirty. And the thing that Jesus was trying to tell them was that because of the daily cares and the daily things that you go in life, you're going to pick up some dirt. Amen. You're going to end up with some dirty feet. And the thing is this. When 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 Peter still didn't get it, because he, when Jesus told him, well, you can't have no part of me if you don't let me wash you. The, the, what, what Jesus was saying is, I need to bring deliverance to you. Yes, I need to wash off the things of the daily life out of you so that you will not be hindered to be able to be in right fellowship and relationship with me. And if you don't let me do it, that's going to hinder our relationship. Because I can't love God. I can't be in there calling out and casting out Jezebel if me and her's best friend. I mean, if she's living in me, I can't tell her to leave you because she don't look at me and say, girlfriend, me and you are hooked up. Oh, what you mean? Why are you trying to cuss Jezebel out of her? Like, hey, we, we, we like this. I mean, and so Jesus is trying to tell him, you have to let me wash your feet. Hey, I rose so poor. Hey, I, I, yes, I. You got to let me wash your feet because otherwise we can't be in communion. We, our, our relationship is going to be broken. That's going to be something in the way that keeps us from flowing. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said, so it's this thing that we have to do. So he said, when he told him, when he, and then Peter, he didn't get it. He was like, well, just give me a whole bath then. He said, no, 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 you already clean. Let me tell it to you like that. You're already saved. So you're already saved from sin in terms of you're going to heaven. Amen. But you need your feet washed because daily you pick something up. See, tomorrow you might walk through some dust and you're going to have to deal with the night that you, somebody that said something wrong to you, to you, to you. Somebody that said something and you might ready to take your earrings off and go, hey, let's what? I'm ready to box you. And you can look down and say, oh, my feet done got dirty. My feet done got dirty. Because I done picked up this anger. Or you know what? The enemy will try to make you feel rejected. You know, you think you're doing well. You thought you done did something good. You give some presentation at work. And they looking at you sideways and cross like, Like, what in the world are you talking about? Spirit of rejection trying to say, see, you wasn't really prepared. After, look down. Your feet done got dirty. Your feet done got dirty. Your feet done got dirty. See, 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 in life, you know, you thinking you're doing good. You're doing stuff for folks. And and they would be the same ones talking about you, jabbing you in the back. <laughs> you know, I mean, then you try to figure, wait, 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 who? And then you get your neck going. How dead it? Up, oh, look down. Your feet done got dirty. Come on. Your feet done got dirty. Your feet done got dirty. And what Jesus is saying, look, I need for you to understand the purpose of me washing your feet yes. is to deal with the daily stuff Hallelujah. that you pick up. Amen. The stuff that you walk on. The stuff that you walk through. The stuff that keeps you from being who you got meant to be. Hebrews 3.14 says, so if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believe, we share, we share in all that belongs to Christ. See, he was saying, look, I want you to share in everything I have, but you got to let me wash your feet. And in Psalms 119 and 9 said, how could a young person stay pure by obeying your word? He was saying, look, this is how you keep yourself clean. He said, when you obey my words, when you follow me, then you will even be mindful to realize when your feet are dirty. Because, you know, sometimes you can walk around with dirty feet so long, you know, I don't know, ain't nobody going to confess it. But you don't went to bed sometimes and if you got to look at your feet like, oh, them suckers is dirty. You 
going to put them dirty feet on the linen. And guess what? Dirty feet dirty up everything else. You might not see it, but see, that's what God wants you to do. Clean your feet. Clean the place you walk. Clean the stuff in your life so you don't turn around and dirty up other stuff. You don't dirty places where you walk. You don't dirty places where you sit. You don't dirty things where you go. God is saying, let me clean your feet because your feet is what steps first. Your soul is what shows up if it's dirty. Your soul, a dirty soul shows up. I don't care how much you try to, you can take a pig put her on a pretty wig and put some lipstick on her. Guess what? She's still a pig. God is saying that that stuff in you, I don't care how you try to pretty it up, you can try to, you know, enunciate very well and you can do all that, but if you still got some dirt on your feet, it's going to show up. Yes, it's going to show up. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You see, as I said, you remember, they were climbing and eating. But they were eating. Well, I want to tell you, that's a, a symbol of the church. When we come together, what are we supposed to be eating? We're supposed to be eating the word. We're supposed to be eating the word. We're supposed to be coming together to commune together to eat the word. And it's evident to other folks that sitting with you that your feet are dirty. That's if they got any ability to discern. And some of them don't discern because their feet is even dirtier than yours, so that's why they don't know your feet dirty. Come on. But it's, so in modern terms, as I said, it's the cleansing of our soul. Amen. And God is saying, look, church, I want to take you through deliverance. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to clean you. On, and I want you to understand something. This don't always mean I need deliverance because I went out and sinned. I, I willfully sinned. It's because it's life. Come on, As you walk through life, you're going to get your feet dirty. There are going to be things you pick up. Even if you try tip and toe, you know, you be trying to tip toe through stuff. How many times you can try to tip toe through a puddle and your feet still got wet? Sometimes you can tip toe through stuff and it's still going to get on. Some of us think, I can go. And the bad thing about it, God says some of us are tipping right into the dirty stuff. He said tip yourself right on out of there because you are setting yourself up for dirty feet. Amen. But Jesus, his whole thing was to tell them. You are my disciples. I'm preparing you because I know I'm going. I need you to gird yourself up as a servant. And know that I love you. That's why I'm doing this. And I'm going to love you through the stuff you jack up. I'm going to love you through your doubts. I'm going to love you through your fears. I'm going to love you through your struggles. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. And nothing you can do can stop me from loving you. It's not. See, we think too often, and this is how the enemy gets us. We think we are trying to do so God can love us. No, 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 no. God loves us, which equips us to do. You're not trying to gain God's love by doing nothing. Because he loves you before you, he loved you before you even knew you were supposed to do something for him. How do you know that? Because he sent his son when we was jacked up. He didn't send his son when we was all fixed up. He sent up his son to us and to this world when sin was prevalent, when sin was ruling. He said, I know that you're going to need some help because you don't know how to do this without me. And the, the nerve that we think that we need to do something so he can love us. You couldn't do enough if it was a requirement to receive his love. See, that's what we do. We tell people, I love you after you do A, B, C, D. We give them this long list, about as long as this banner, on what they need to do first. And then we be like, well, see, Look at him. You did most of it, but you missed number 942A. You missed that first part of that one, so I really can't love you. That's not how God works. He said, I love you, period. I love you. Now let my love fix you. Now let my love stoop down, because you wasn't good enough to get up. I need you to stoop down. Let my love stoop down and clean your dirty feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so that means you and I have the mandate to stoop down and be willing to take somebody else through deliverance. We got to stoop down and be willing to say, I don't care I, I love you through your issues. I love you through your betrayals. I love you through your doubt. I love you through your fears. Because I'm going to love you. Why? Because God first loved me like oh, that. Oh. He first loved me like that. And because he first loved me like that, I am equipped now to love you the same way. And if I'm not loving like that, I need to check myself because my feet dirty. I need to check myself because, see, when God cleanses us, when he fixes us, guess what? You can love folks no matter what they do. And we know some people be doing stuff jacked up. You just be giving them the side eye like really new. You thought I didn't see what you was doing, but I'm going to love you anyway. That's all right. 
you just think I'm stupid. Because people will look at your love and think you're being fooled, but you just know that you're doing it. Not for them, but you're doing it for God. Oh, yeah. You're doing it for God. And so today, as I come to the end of my message, my prayer for us, and I'm getting ready to pray for us, Lord, ask the Lord, what's, what, you, what, what gets your feet dirty? What's dirty on your feet? What your feet done stepped in? What you done picked up that you need to get rid of? What got your feet dirty? What got your feet dirty? What got your feet dirty? Jesus is saying, I'm right here. I'm ready to stoop down and clean your feet. You know why he wants to clean your feet? Because of the same reason he wanted to clean the disciples. He said, because I needed to equip him and get them ready for what I knew was coming. I need to get them ready for the battles that was getting ready to come. I need to get them ready for the, 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 the things they were going to need to face. I need to get them ready for the war that was getting ready to come on. But they couldn't be ready and they couldn't do it if they kept their feet dirty. Amen. So won't you stand with me? You can play open heavens. That'll do it for me all the time. Yeah, amen. And that's my, I'm going to pray for you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray for you. Tiffany, I need you to come stand up here with me. Awesome, and see, this is what you're saying right there. Lord, the, the Lord wants to clean our dirty feet. And, and this is the place where I just need you to be honest. And say, yeah, I got some doubts. I got some fears. I don't see myself as this great person that God constantly tells me I am. I hear people say it and sound good, but as soon as they walk away, doubt just goes and just kind of slaps me upside the head and says, uh-uh, that ain't you. That must be a false prophecy because that surely couldn't be you. Well, today we're going to wash some feet in the spirit. So if that's you, come, 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 come for prayer. 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 Now the first thing I'm going to do is I want us to come out of agreement with the dirt on our feet. I want us to come out of agreement with it. So say this after me. Lord, I come out of agreement with everything that makes me have dirty feet. That keeps me from being who you call me to be. I renounce it. And then I say, forgive me for listening to the lies and believing the untruths. But today, I receive truth and my feet are going to be clean. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is what we get ready to do. I'm going to do a general prayer. And then, James, you're going to start on this end. We're going to pray for each one of y'all individually for the Lord to break off Clean up y'all dirty feet. Clean up our dirty feet. And you, ma'am, are going to start on that scene. That's why the Lord told me today. He said, go lay hands on her as the deliverer today. When you got up, he said, you got up with the power to do it. So don't pick up no dirt because he cleaned your feet while you was over there on the floor. He told me to do you first because I was going to need your help. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to do a general prayer. And then you're going to pray for folks. If y'all know what it is, you tell it to the person praying for you so they can pray for your feet to be clean. Thank you, Jesus. Let me pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, we ask you to come in this place and take over like never before. We're calling for the angels of God to step into this room. Father, we have come because we believe by faith that you get ready to clean our dirty feet, that you get ready to change on the inside of us, Father. You get ready to shift us. You're going to deliver us. You're going to set us free. Those things that's been holding us, they will no longer hold us. And then, Father, when you, when you deliver us, when you set us free, we ask you to fill that void with your love. Fill that void with your spirit. We pray a fresh baptism over your people right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that you would rise up in them like never before. We pray, God, that you would fill them with love. I mean so tangible, Father, that they can feel it. Let joy be released in their life. Let peace be 
released in their life. Father, and then give them the strategy to help them to walk fully in what you have called them to be so they can walk in it on purpose, in purpose. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, we get ready to do ministry. Spirit, 